You have made this journey to die for me with unspeakable love. And I have so many times ungratefully abandoned you. But now I love you with all my heart. And because I love you, I am sincerely sorry for ever having offended you. Pardon me, my God, and permit me to accompany you on this journey. You go to die for love of me. I want my Redeemer to die for love of you. My Jesus, I will live and die always united to you. At the cross of motion keeping stood the mournful mother weeping close to Jesus. The first station, Pilate condemns Jesus to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how Jesus Christ, after being scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. My adorable Jesus, it was not Pilate, no, it was my sins that condemned you to die. I beseech you by the merits of this sorrowful journey to assist my soul on its journey to eternity. I love you, my beloved Jesus. I love you more than I love myself. With all my heart, I repent of ever having offended you. Never let me be separated from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. second station, Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <laughs> Consider Jesus as he walked his road with his cross on his shoulders, thinking of us and offering to his Father in our behalf the death he was about to suffer. My most beloved Jesus, I embrace all the suffering you have destined for me until death. I beg you, by you, all your sufferings and carrying your cross, to help me carry mine with the perfect grace and resignation. I love you, Jesus, my love. I repent of ever having offended you. Never let me separate myself from you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Oh, how sad and sore distressed was that mother highly blessed of the soul begotten one? Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider Jesus. Loss of blood from the scourging and crowning with thorns had so weakened him that he could hardly walk. And yet he had to carry that great load upon his shoulders. As a soldier struck him cruelly, he fell several times under the heavy cross. My beloved Jesus, it was not the weight of the cross, 
but the weight of my sins, which made you suffer so much. By the merits of this first fall, save me from falling into mortal sin. I love you, O my Jesus, with all my heart, and I am sorry that I have offended you. May I never offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Christ above in torment hangs, she beneath beholds the pain of her dying glorious Son. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how the Son met his mother on the way to Calvary. Jesus and Mary gazed at each other, and their looks became so as so many arrows to wound their, those hearts which love each other so tenderly. My most loving Jesus, by the pain you suffered in this morning, my queen, who was overwhelmed with sorrow, I obtained for me my soul. Render unto lasting remembrance of the passion of your divine Son. I love you, Jesus, my love, above all things. I repent of ever having offended you. I offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be our name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Is there one who would not weep? Well, did his abuse so deep? Christ, dear mother, to behold. The fifth station, Simon helps carried across. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how weak and weary Jesus was. At every step, he was at the point of expiring, fearing that he would die in a way when they wished him to die that infamous death on the cross. They forced Simon of Cyrene to help carry the cross after our Lord. My beloved Jesus, I will not refuse the cross as Simon did. I accept it and embrace it. I accept this particular death that is destined for me with all the pains of the of company. It. I unite my hand with love and you. And I have died for love of me, and I will die for love of you and to please you. Help me by your grace. I love you, Jesus, my love. I repent of ever having offended you. Never let me be in you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Can the human heart refrain from partaking in her pain? Is that mother's pain untold? The sixth station, Veronica, offers her veil to Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider the compassion of the holy woman, Veronica, seeing Jesus in such distress, her face, his face bathed in sweat and blood. She presented him with her veil. Jesus wiped his face and left up on the cloth the image of his sacred countenance. My beloved Jesus, your face was beautiful before you began this journey, but now it is no longer appears beautiful and is disfigured with wounds and blood. Alas, my soul also was once beautiful, when it received your grace in baptism, but I have since defigured it by my sins. You alone, my dear Redeemer, can restore it to its former beauty. Do this by the merits of your passion, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Bruised, derided, cursed, defiled. She beheld her tender child, all with bloody scourges ran. The seventh station, Jesus falls a second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how the second fall of Jesus under his heavy cross, his cross renews his pain in all the wounds of his head and members of his our afflicted Lord. My most gentle Jesus, how many times have I forgotten me? And how many times have I forgotten God? Again and again and again to offend you. And that in all my temptations, I may always have recourse to you. I love you, Jesus, my love, with all my heart. I am sorry that I have offended you. Never let me offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with Thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. For the sins of his own nation saw him hang in desolation. Till his spirit for thee The A station, Jesus speaks to the woman, women. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how the women wept with compassion, seeing Jesus so distressed and dripping with blood as he walked along. Jesus said to them, Weep not so much for me, but rather for your children. My Jesus, laid with sorrow, I weep for because of the punishment I deserve for them, and still more because of the displeasure they have caused you, who have loved me. 
It is your love, more than a fear of hell, which makes me weep for my sins. My Jesus, I love you more than myself. I am sorry that I have offended you. Never allow me to offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O sweet Mother, fount of love, teach my spirit from above. Make my heart with yours accord. In the ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how Jesus Christ fell for the third time. He was extremely weak, and the cruelty of his executions was excessive. They tried to hasten his steps, though he hardly had strength to move. My God, Jesus, by the weakness you appeared in his return to Calvary, give me enough strength to overcome the and all my evil passions, and me despise your friendship. I love you, Jesus, my love, with all my heart, and I am sorry for ever having offended you. Never permit me to offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Make me feel as you have felt. Make my soul to glow and melt. With the love of Christ, my Lord. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how Jesus was violently stripped of his clothes by his executioners. The inner garments adhered to his lacerated flesh, and the soldiers tore, tore them off so roughly that the skin came with them. Have pity for our Savior, so cruelly treated, and tell him, My innocent Jesus, and strings of your garments, help me to strip myself of all attachments for things of earth, that I may place all my love in you, who are so worthy of my love. I love you, O Jesus, with all my heart. I am sorry that I have offended you. Never let me offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Holy Mother, pierce me through. In my heart each wound renew. Of my Savior crucified. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. 
We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider Jesus thrown down upon a cross. He stretched out his arms and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. They nailed his hands and feet, and then raising the cross, left him to die in anguish. My despised Jesus, nail my heart to the cross, that I may always remain there to love you and never leave you again. I love you more than I love myself, and I am sorry for all you having offended you. Never permit me to offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let me share with you his pain, who for all our sins who will me in torments die. The twelfth station, Jesus dies upon a cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how your Jesus, after three hours of agony on the cross, is finally overwhelmed with suffering, and abandoning himself to the weight of his body, bows his head and dies. My dying Jesus, I devotedly kiss the cross on which you would die for love of me. I deserve, because of my sins, to die a terrible death. But your death is my hope. By the merits of your death, give me the grace to die embracing your feet and burning with love of you. I yield my soul into your hands. I love you with my whole heart. I am sorry that I have offended you. Never let me offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let me mingle tears with thee. Morning him who mourned for me all the days that I may live. The thirteenth station, <clears throat> Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Consider how, after our Lord had died, he was taken down from the cross by two of his disciples, Joseph and Nicodemus, and placed in the arms of his afflicted mother. She received him with the unutterable tenderness and pressed him close to her bosom. O oh, mother of sorrows, for the love of your son, accept me as your servant and pray to him for me. And you, my redeemer, since you have died for me, allow me to love you. For I desire only you and nothing more. I love you, Jesus, my love, and I am sorry that I have offended you. Never let me offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fourteen station, Jesus is placed in a sepulchre. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. <clears throat> Consider how the disciples carried the body of Jesus to its burial, while his holy mother went with them and arranged it in a sepulchre with her own hands. They then closed the tomb and all departed. O oh, my buried Jesus, I kiss the stone which closes you in. But you, glorious, did rise again on the third day. I beg you by your resurrection that I may be raised gloriously on the last day, to be united with you in heaven, to praise you and love you forever. I love you, my Jesus, and of ever having offended you. Grant that I may love you always, and to do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Virgin of all virgins, bless. Listen to my fond request. Let me share your grief divine. Let's pray together to Jesus Christ crucified. My good and dear Jesus, I kneel before you, asking you most earnestly to engrave upon my heart a deep and lively faith, hope, and charity with true repentance for my sins and a firm resolve to make amends. As I reflect upon your five wounds and dwell upon them with deep compassion and grief, I recall, good Jesus, the words of the prophet David spoke long ago concerning yourself. They pierced my hands and my feet. They have numbered all my bones. Those of you who are staying, it might be nice to uh, move up a little bit so you can see the speaker and he can see you.
big decisions, where to sit. Okay, tonight our speaker is Father Cashin, Cashin? Koneman. He's a, um, a Benedictine monk, and he's the prior of St. Louis, um, St. Louis Abbey. Father Cashin wears lots of hats. He juggles teaching and counseling teens and offering sacraments to the par parishioners. Um, he look, looks after infirm monks. He re recreates with friends and fellow monks, but his chief pursuit is God. He takes a cue, a cue from St. Therese of Lisieux when she says, to enjoy God's mercy, one must humble oneself, recognizing one's nothingness, and that's what many souls do not want to do. So tonight, his topic is the grace of nothingness. Thank you for having me this evening. Thank you for the wonderful Stations of the Cross. They did me a lot of good. This is the first Lent where I did not use the Stations of the Cross as part of my Lenten regime. So it was wonderful to hear that stop at Mater and pray those prayers. Picture with me for a second a raft that holds about 12 people. And uh, the raft is taking on water, so uh, the people have pulled off to the side of a tumultuous river to empty it. And uh, if you are of the Jesuit mindset of prayer, you can mentally put yourself into the raft for the rest of the story. Otherwise, you can watch safely from the sidelines. Ahead of us in the Ekoe River is the Olympic course, the whitewater rafting Olympic course. And it's filled every day to the brim uh, with water because there's a system of dams to ensure that it is always as treacherous as possible. And this group of 20-somethings decide, as 20-somethings do, that we're going through the center of that course no matter what. And as you can expect, we make it around the first turn, make it around the second turn, and then hit the first real difficulty. And the entire raft gets thrown straight backwards in the river, upended, and we all end up in the water with people throwing uh, life preservers at us a little bit downstream. I wanted to use that example because I believe that in our journey of life, there are two ways of kind of going astray in our spiritual life. One is presumption, just to go straight through the rapids in a way that you're not able to handle. Uh, and that leads to ruin, of course. But secondly, faint-heartedness. If you're on a truly you know, tumultuous river, that is life and you're too timid, well, the chances your raft could be swamped by the waves just as easily as it could be in the middle of the Olympic course. So how do we avoid each of these extremes? That is our conversation for this evening, and we're going to use Blessed Columba Marmion, uh, as our guide. He's the most recent Benedictine to be raised to the altars. And uh, I have a little book on him, The Grace of Nothingness, Navigating the Spiritual Life with Blessed Columba Marmion. He believes that the only way to navigate this life 
is with a combination of a humble confidence in God or a confident humility in God if you want the other way around. And here's a little text from one of his letters of spiritual direction to get us started. Oh, my dear child, I would wish to engrave on your heart in letters of gold this truth, that no matter how great our misery, we are infinitely rich in Jesus Christ if we unite with him, if we lean on him, if we realize constantly by a living faith that all the value of our prayer and of all that we do comes from his merits in us. All this is contained in two texts. Without me, you can do nothing, John 15, 5. And I can do all things in him who strengthens me, Philippians 4, 13. So let's first talk about uh, the combination of these two. Without humility, we will fall to the presumption that God will simply bless our paths rather than discern his path and try to follow it. But without the confidence in God, and even with a good humility, there's a great risk of falling to becoming merely confused, discouraged, despaired. And so the two are necessary to, to navigate this life. Let's talk just a second on the side of humility. Blessed Columba, like many saints, uses this strange phrase, I am nothing. Nearly every doctor of the church has used it. Many of the great saints have used it. But what does it mean? They surely can't be saying this in a sense of low self-esteem, of self-distrust. They're simply too charitable, heroically charitable, to be using it in such a way. I think there's a hint in that, that reading we just had from Marmion, which is John 15, 5. I am the vine, says Jesus, and you are the branches, and without me you can do nothing. Over time, the saints have changed that into I am nothing because of the theology of grace and merits. Just a real quick reminder on that. A very simple definition of grace is the power of God at work in a person. And it heals and transforms and perfects a person. It's the type of higher power at work that a graduate of a 12-step program would recognize. It's that type of healing transforming, perfecting power within a person. All too often we think, well, yes, maybe God can work in that treatment program in that way. But we don't often think, but he wants to work with me in that way every day, every hour. That transformative power is what we seek by humility without it, we can do very little that is meritorious of heaven, that is truly impressive in a saintly kind of way, truly little that allows God to work through us as his instrument without it. And so we seek the transforming power of God. And it is that that we hope for in humility, not to become a doormat, not to become someone who just lets life pass him or her by, but someone who allows God to fully enter 
and relive his life in that person. There's a beautiful little phrase he has which talks about kind of the change in life that happens when we allow ourselves to start just discerning God's ways and trying to follow that path of grace on them. He's adamant that there's a path of blessing for each person if we but just get on to it and stay on it. And he's got a wonderful proof text, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, B. This is the will of God, your sanctification. And if God is willing something, he's constantly in act, working on that thing, replanning it as many times as necessary. So, from this point forward, there is a wonderful path of blessing full of transformative graces for each person in this room. There is another aspect of this that Marmion is very strong on. It is that at this altar, there is enough grace in every Mass due to the representation of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus, fully in power right here, to make each person a saint. So if we didn't wake up as saints this morning, it's on us. It's on our obstacles that we've placed to the process. It's on our interior hesitancies. It's on our not really fully given ourselves over to this transformative power. And I think that's why the saints who seek this transformation in Christ so deeply eventually find this phrase of Jesus, do this through me. I cannot do this on my own. I'm nothing without you. I cannot do that. So please, you know, have this conversation with a kid through me. Like, it's very clear as a priest, you know, a kid's grieving. No one has a thing to say to a child in grief. But you can at least say, Christ, work through me. Whatever this kid needs, somehow find the presence or the words for the situation. It's that turning to Christ that we need in every meeting, in every phone call. When I was in the world... I realized that when the phone rings, you've already put down whatever you were previously doing, and you have three seconds still to pick up the phone. So why not make a little prayer? Come, Holy Spirit. That's it. But if that phone rings ten times a day, you're starting to get into a rhythm where you're seeking the Holy Spirit's help in every little part of the day. If every time you walk into the threshold of a meeting, you internally say to yourself, Come, Holy Spirit, do this meeting through me. You're slowly reminding yourself in the rhythm of the day to bring God's transforming power into that day. Slowly but surely, one can adjust to this new, point of, new way of life. And then, slowly, the things that seemed important before become less important. And God's ways suddenly become a little bit clearer, a little bit sharper. To jump all the way down the process a little bit, I have a brief quote from Marmion, which talks about the reversal that can happen by this going to God, as St. Therese says, with empty hands. So, all too often, we go to God wanting to give him something, desperate to give him something. Whereas, I think, more often than not, he wants us to go and say, please, 
Fill me the way you want to fill me. Do your work today through me. So St. Therese's going to God with empty hands is just a restatement of this old phrase, I am nothing. And slowly but surely one becomes what Marmion calls a monument of God's mercy. Be a monument of his mercy for all eternity. The greater the wretchedness and the unworthiness, the greater and more adorable his mercy. The abyss of our wretchedness invokes the abyss of his mercy. It is an immense consolation for me to see that you are traveling by this road which is so sure, which leads to such heights, and which glorifies the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the mercy of God. It is a way that I too have chosen. Help me by your prayers. See, I think the reason we are so desperate to give God a gift is that we're kind of afraid to going, of going incomplete to him. And the real fact is we all go deeply incomplete to him. And what we really need to do is just allow him to compensate for us, allow the sacred heart to fill in our, our gaps to provide for us. When we reach God, it's not that we've won the trophy. It's that we say, God, have mercy on me. I want to be with you. There's this beautiful prayer of daily neglects, traditional prayer, which goes, Eternal Father, I offer you the sacred heart of Jesus with all its love, all its suffering, and all its merits. First, to expiate the sins I've committed this day and during all my life. Second, to purify the good I've done badly this day and during all my life. And third, to minister for the good I ought to have done this day and during all my life. With that mindset, we can more confidently go to God. We can kind of go to sleep a little bit more peacefully. And we can stop trying to strive for whatever that gift is we're giving him, whatever that importance it is that we're so desperately wanting. And each of us defines it in a different way. And instead, we start to forgive. We start to just allow his mercy to reign in our lives and to spread from our lives to other lives. And so we've come to the confidence side of our talk. It is in that sacred heart. It is in that mercy that we have to take the confidence the confidence that God wants a friendship with us. He wants each of us to be saints, to be as flourishing as we can, the most amazing version of ourselves, and to allow his process to unfold towards that without getting in the way. Because don't we all too often, if we're obsessed with something else, bumble up and get in the way and goof up the process. If he's constantly trying to do this in us, starting today, then let us take faith in that and let that transformation unfold. Let him complete us rather than presumptuously striving all the time through self-reliance, to try to complete it ourselves. Here is a wonderful quote. I don't often use it. It's one that I thought tonight was helpful for someone out there. 
When we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, we ought to repeat to ourselves the words St. Augustine heard. Why cannot you do what those did? What motives have we for not aiming at holiness? Oh, I know very well what each of you is tempted to say. I have such and such a difficulty. There is such and such an obstacle standing in my way. I would never be able to become a saint. But be assured that all the saints have met with such a difficulty or found such an obstacle standing in their way and much bigger ones than yours. So therefore, no one can say, holiness is not for me. What is it that makes it impossible? God desires it for us. He wants us to be holy for his glory and for our joy. This is the will of God, your sanctification. God isn't making fun of us. When our Lord says to us, be perfect, he knows what he is asking of us, and he does not demand anything that is beyond our power when we lean upon his grace. One who claimed to arrive at perfection through his own strength would be committing the sin of Lucifer, who said, I will raise myself up. I will place my throne in heaven. I will be like the Most High. Satan was struck down and hurled into the abyss. As for us, what shall we say? What shall we do? We nourish the same ambition as this prideful angel. We wish to reach the objective aimed at by this proud one. But whereas he claimed to attain it for himself, we shall declare that without Christ Jesus, we can do nothing. We shall say that it is with him and through him that we can enter into heaven. O oh Christ Jesus, I have such faith in you that I believe that you are powerful enough to effect this marvel of raising a lowly creature like me not simply to the hierarchies of angels, but up to God himself. It is only through you that we can arrive at this divine summit. I want to return just a second at such and such an obstacle and such and such a difficulty. There are real difficulties. I work in healing and deliverance in this diocese. There's a an amazing group of people at the Catholic Renewal Center who do this work day in and day out. We have people who come to us with small problems and big, but we have people who come to us with deep traumas, overlapping traumas, massive wounds, and who get healing who turn to God for that transforming power and receive it. It's a relatively new development in the church that just as faith healing can cure a person from cancer, so praying with the charismatic gifts of the Spirit can help a person overcome whatever great interior obstacle he or she has so as to be free. You know, the Savior really means the healer. Its etymological roots is salve in the English language. There's another derivative of it. 
It's, it's healing. So, with regard to those obstacles, there is in this diocese an amazing healing that can happen. Sometimes in conjunction with psychological professionals, they are wonderful too, but very efficiently and sometimes extremely powerfully and quickly. There's great healing if anyone wants it. It's on offer. I want to close with just a, a quote about the fruit of this spirituality. That is the entirety, more or less the spirituality. I hope that you pick up the book. It's in the back if you want it. They're $18 and I do not have change. So 20 helps someone else to pick up a book for free. And if you're the person that wants to pick up a book for free, go for it. Um, it's a simple spirituality. There's a lot of depth to it, but there's not a lot of difficult practices to it other than a humble confidence in God. God acts towards us as we act towards him. God, as it were, measures his providence according to our attitude in relation to him. And the more we give ourselves to him, the more we look upon him as our father, as the spouse of our souls, the more his providence enters into the least details and circumstances of our life. For a soul totally surrendered to him, God has ineffable delicacies which shows that his gaze is ever fixed upon it. Never has mother cared for her child, never has friend gladdened his friend, as God cares for and gladdens this soul. This soul is perfectly free and detached from self and from creatures. It is captive of nothing whatsoever, neither an employment nor a charge. It seeks and desires God. And when it has found him, its every desire is fulfilled. God is the sovereign master of the soul. Nothing in it disputes the sovereignty. It procures him incomparable glory by the continual homage of utter self-surrender. The Lord works great things through it, and its life has the most wonderful repercussion in the spiritual world. The liberty possessed by souls thus given to God brings them great peace and deep joy. They know that God is a father full of goodness, that he loves them and wills to bring them to himself. What have they to fear? God guides them. Nothing is wanting to them, neither light nor grace. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. They live in the abundance of divine gifts and in an inward peace, passing all understanding. I want to return just ever so briefly to that phrase, captive of nothing whatsoever. That is the type of liberation that is on offer by God's healing, transforming, perfecting power. What are the fears that most hold us captive? They are whatever make us feel our nothingness. But if we have a humble confidence in God, we can trust that never has mother cared for her child, never has friend gladdened his friend, as God cares for and gladdens this soul.
Thank you. Thank you, Father Kuhnman. Um, it was a good reminder that our recognizing our dependency is uh, is our path to freedom and peace. So um, anyway, next week we will have another speaker brought to you by St. Joseph Radio. It will be um, the author of Running to Live, no, Waiting to Die, Running to Live. <laughs> His name is Matt Burke, Mike Burke. And he's a, a marathon runner who was born with cerebral palsy. So he has an interesting story. I hope to see you again next week. Thank you.